Welcome to the Mind and Body Wellness, a weekly television show where we talk about the health of your mind, body, and spirit, where we interview a variety of guests from the mainstream to the alternative. I'm your host, Clovis Colley, and with me today is uh, Dr. J.C. Folkers with Envision Wellness. Yes, thanks you, thank you for having me, Clovis. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Um, okay, Dr. J.C., you are, what, what kind of a doctor are you? Well, uh, I went to chiropractic school, so I got my doctorate degree originally in chiropractic. Um, upon graduation, I trained postgraduately in functional medicine, functional endocrinology, functional nutrition. So I decided to go more of a holistic uh, alternative route to you know, really figure out how to educate patients on what potential underlying causes uh, really plague them for whatever conditions you know, that, that pe people suffered from. I see. Now, how did you get interested in, in uh, I take it you're not, you're not doing adjustments, you're doing something uh, a little different than chiropractic. Well, uh, uh, I actually do, do practice chiropractic. I do incorporate adjustments in with some of the, uh, you know, the programs and the curriculums that we have in our office. Uh, but dur while I was in graduate school, in chiropractic school, I personally had a lot of health issues, digestive problems, low energy. And after graduation is when I, you know, wasn't, wasn't until then is when I started to kind of practice certain lifestyle things to improve my own health. And that's what kind of really prompted my interest into helping others with these digestive problems and other autoimmune conditions. So it, I kind of just added that onto what um, I already kind of learned through my curriculum as a, as a chiropractic student. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you, if you look at the curriculum with a chiropractor and a med medical student, it's pretty much identical the first two years. After that, a lot of, a lot of medical uh, school students l focus more on pharmacology, uh, studying different you know, medications, where we focus more on nutrition, lifestyle, and that sort of a, an aspect. I see. Now, uh, tell me, what, what is endocrinology? So it's hard for some people right, to say, including your host. Yeah, so, so an endocrinologist basically is a, a doctor that specializes in, in hormones. So uh, most people will, would be referred to an endocrinologist if, if, say, their general doctor suspects you may have a hormone imbalance. So they'll ref get referred to the endocrinologist, and typically that specialist will order some tests to you know, look at possibly different hormone imbalances, things like you know, thyroid, uh, insulin, blood sugar levels, um, other hormones to try to identify if there are imbalances and, and then ultimately try to figure out how to correct that. I see. Well, uh, I know you, and so, uh, so therefore I know that you specialize a lot in dealing with the thyroid and, uh, and basically from my layman's perspective, just getting pe helping people get their balance, their, their, their blood work and their right. bodies into balance, uh, their endocrine system. That's correct. Uh, um, as you mentioned the thyroid, um, 30 million Americans do suffer from hypothyroidism, and that, that means low thyroid functioning. And uh, half of those people are, are undiagnosed. And it just so happens that, you know, that hypothyroidism does happen to affect women five times more than men. And uh, why is that? It's just, um, well, you know, there's a lot of different reasons. They think that uh, because of different hormone changes that women uh, deal with, uh, there's also um, toxins that they're exposing themselves to at a young age from using cosmetics. Then you have pregnancies, which cause a lot of hormone changes, then menopause. So they're just kind of, I mean, when men do uh, get this, develop this as well, but it seems more common with women because of all the different hormone changes. I see. Now, if, uh, if somebody's, uh, if a woman's thyroid is out, is that gonna amplify problems as far as the uh, uh, menopause, uh, menstrual issues, well, things like that. As a matter of fact, uh, if a person has a low functioning thyroid, that, uh, that hormone does in fact impact every single cell in the body. So 100 trillion cells are actually uh, affected and need this hormone. So when, when a person has a low functioning thyroid, it can, it can affect every system in your body from um, you know, energy levels, you can't sleep, uh, it can affect menstruation, it can cause problems with digestion, and um, weight loss. And a matter of fact, that's a real common thing, people. Uh, when I have a patient that is, is exercising like crazy, they're 
practically starving themselves, you know, on this real restricted diet. They can't lose weight. I know I'm dealing with a thyroid patient, most likely. Now, uh, you know, I, I've read quite a bit, and I, uh, from what I'm reading and, and uh, from uh, kind of the newest stuff that's coming out on diet, it's right. appearing to me that the calorie model is pretty... Right. It's, per, it's a pretty, it's 150 years old, it's and when you eat a Twinkie, you don't start it on fire inside right, your right, body, you're right. breaking it down chemically. Yes. So somebody had mentioned to me, well, uh, if Michael, Michael Phelps was actually gonna, going to, if you're going to apply the calorie model to him, he would have had to swim it to the moon and back every day right, right, to right. burn off the food he was eating. Right. What's wrong with the calorie model? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, Clovis, and, and I, I will mention the exercise, a lot of people have the misconception that I can eat what I want as long as I exercise and do this and burn this. You, you can't exercise yourself out of a poor diet, number one. And number two is that model, calorie. a lot of us learn that calories in, calories out, that's how you gain or lose weight. However, it's always the hormones that play a bigger role in whether or not you're gonna you know, gain weight, lose weight, where that fat's going to be stored, and uh, that, like I said, there are people that literally eat next to nothing, and they can't lose weight. As a matter of fact, they're gaining weight, and particularly in the belly area. Uh, and there's also the type of fat that stores in, in near the organs, as you know, the visceral fat, which is even more, you know, dangerous and can cause more problems. I see. Uh, well, along with uh, with those things that I read, it it appears more that if you can get your Basically, uh, and again, from a layman's perspective, right. uh, and that's how I have to talk about it, from uh, getting this stuff in your bloodstream balanced is much more right. effective than doing. Yes. Uh, and what I found for myself in particular is if I exercise a little bit, four or five times a gotcha. day, it's far more effective than going down and just wearing myself out for an hour. Well, I'm glad you said that. So, you know, in, in reference to exercise, a lot of people do also have that conception, misconception rather, that more is better. So if, if, if I can lose a couple pounds exercising, you know, uh, you know, half an hour every day, well, I'm going to bump it up to an hour every day. And I see people at the gym when I literally puddles of sweat around them on mm -hmm. the treadmill. Obviously, they've probably been running for 45 minutes an hour, and that will not you know, uh, give you the weight loss that they're looking for. As a matter of fact, I want to go over to them and tell them, you know, you're, you're kind of wasting your time because if you exercise uh, more efficiently, there's a science to it. You can exercise, like you mentioned, 25, 30 minutes, three days a week. It, by doing it properly, by stimulating your hormones, you can burn fat uh, for the next 48 hours after that workout. I see. Well, yeah. what I found was if I... Uh if I do that, I'd go on a stair stepper or something yep. like that and do it for a half hour, an hour. I actually felt like I was crashing exactly. my metabolism and I was tired all the time. Well, but I found out if I ate and then I exercised within about 10 minutes after I ate and exercised for about 10 or 15 minutes, yep. I, was, uh, I had energy for the rest of the day and sometimes throughout the next day. Yes, Is that, yes I, that's I, a I kind feel of like I'm communicating my body you're doing to it right. Do something. Just like what you said. Well, when I exercise, when you exercise for like an hour, and you, you're you're telling, you're sending messages to your body. You're telling your body, I need to hold on to more energy, potential energy, or or fat. I need, you know, you're hungry more. You're you're tired. So you, you know, it just you're stimulating these hormones that are telling your body to basically preserve as much energy as possible. Versus, do a quick workout. You know, kind of. Uh, I, I like to teach more of like a burst interval style, get, you know, get the heart rate up, bring it down, that kind of a thing. You're stimulating the f fast twitch muscle fibers, which is going to really recruit more fat burning. That's what, like you just said, will cause those hormones to, to rise, growth hormone levels, burn fat, have more energy, like you said, the next couple of days. So you're actually right on the right track with that. I see. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask one more question. We can get off diet a little bit. Okay. But uh, there's lots of argument. I mean, uh, there's almost as many diets out there as there are people trying yes. to lose weight, and that's what's 60 million people in this country right. or something. Right. Is Americans were way overweight. Right. Uh, what would you say about the you know now kind of the latest wisdom says uh, eat six times a day and then don't eat four hours before bed. What right. what's uh, what do you recommend? Well, you know honestly, there there's there really is no one you know cookie cutter. Uh, program for every person. You know, some people ha unfortunately have a lot of hormone imbalances. You know, 
you know, some people that if they have diabetes, for example, and insulin resistance, it can be harmful for them to go long periods without eating. Uh, but then a person who, with their hormones are, you know, working right and everything's in balance, it's, it's more ideal to eat three meals a day uh, and, and have that kind of a fast in between meals. So it kind of depends on the, on, the, on the hormone imbalances or balances and that kind of a thing. Uh, but ultimately, honestly, it's, it's, it's about what you eat and the quality of what you eat. So I see. that's that's Now, uh, white bread's got a real bad rap. Right, right. Uh, white bread's struggling <laughs> for its life right now. Yes, yes it is. And I think it was in, the, well, was in another book I read that there's actually chemicals in there that they use to cause diabetes in rats. Wow. Or mice or something well, like I've that. I read that, but... Yeah, I believe that. It. Okay, but you'll you'll take it you'll take it from me. Yeah, I, I believe. You, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think that I read that somewhere, so you can take that okay. to the bank. Um, let's move off of diet. Uh, let's talk about uh, what what's the deal with thyroid. I know a few people with thyroid problems are going to see a conventional doctor, right. and when I say conventional, I talk about I mean allopathic medicine, and that means just basically the yes. medicine we've been practicing yep. for the last eighty years. You're in functional medicine, and uh, have we talked about what functional medicine means? Uh, well, Could basically, you give us a brief yeah, yeah, real quick. So, functional medicine—I mentioned that what, what I predominantly uh, practice and focus on is is more or less a different kind of a paradigm shift in how you uh, view the, view the body and how you approach um, y y y y you know different conditions, whether it's thyroid, diabetes, hormone imbalances, autoimmunity. It's not. It's moving away from the sim treating symptoms type model and, and perceiving the body as just a set of different organs versus looking at finding the cause and viewing the body as an organism. Everything kind of works together. So, uh, you, you know, I talk, we're talking about the thyroid, but even though the thyroid is, is a real common problem, it's, we're not just a thyroid. We have a lot of other stuff going on. So we, we look at the, the whole system and when a patient comes to me with a thyroid problem or has been diagnosed hypothyroidism, I want to determine why is their thyroid not functioning, and then it's about ordering the, the proper testing to, to figure that out. I see. What's the, uh, we're talking about the thyroid, what's the thyroid do? So the thyroid, uh, first of all, it's located, to, it's a gland located in the lower part of your neck, kind of below your, your uh, the, what do you call it, the Adam's apple here, uh, but more or less it releases thyroid hormone, and thyroid hormone does everything. It, it, every single cell in the body has a thyroid plug, a thyroid receptor, so it controls things like digestion, uh, energy levels, sleep. And when people don't have this, this hormone, they start to have insomnia. They start to have poor digestion. They start to gain weight. They even start to have uh, symptoms like hair falling out, or even uh, the outer third of the eyebrow starts to thin out and things like that. So it really literally can cause every and all type of condition, symptom you can think of. I see. Now, what, uh, so you, you bring people in. Uh, what is the difference between how you test and look at the thyroid uh, versus, uh, versus allopathic medicine or, or so, ordinary good medicine? Good question. So typically when a patient comes in, I'll ask them to bring in what other, whatever labs they have. And we find that most, most thyroid patients, when they come in, they have only maybe had their TSH checked. Uh, which, is a, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, or they've had their uh, maybe T4, maybe sometimes T3 checked. And so it doesn't really give me enough information to determine well, what's the really root cause of why your thyroid's not functioning. And so I actually would order, I order more tests, different, more markers. Uh, even, I even look at the adrenals, which is you know, a, a, a gland that sits on top of your kidneys. It produces cholesterol, or, uh, cortisol, um, and it actually, that, it's like your stress hormone, by the way. That's the being chased by a, a saber-toothed tiger Being chased by a saber-toothed tiger gland. Yeah, and that one there, uh, if that's at, uh, overactive or if you're in that fight or flight kind of uh, state like a lot of us are in this country with the stress that we you put uh, on ourselves, that will cause the thyroid gland to shut down. So I look at a lot of different things, not just TSH in, in, in those kind of uh, limited markers. We kind of go above and beyond that to determine uh, what other things are causing this and um, we, we usually find the most common, matter of fact, 90% of the time, it is autoimmunity that causes this with, with patients. Now, uh, hang on to that, that, that thought about sure. autoimmunity. Um, are, would you say a lot of people have a, their thyroids out and they don't know it? 
about half of uh, people with hypothyroidism have never been diagnosed. And um, it, the common symptom I see, and like I said, is patients come in, uh, they're complaining of they can't lose weight, they exercise every day, they hardly eat, you know, and uh, that sort of thing, and they're just still having uh, issues with weight loss. Uh, then I kind of dive, dive a little bit further. They're having sleep problems, they're, you know, low libido, and I'm suspecting thyroid, but most of the time they've never been checked. I see. Um, now, uh, let's talk about autoimmune diseases. Yes. They're rampant. Right. Uh, and auto autoimmune is your, uh, your ulcerative colitis. Uh, right, right. That's correct. Asthma, allergies. Yep. Multiple scler sclerosis. Yes. Um, IBS. Right. Uh, why, why do we have so many autoimmune diseases? So, so it's a good question, uh, Clovis, and, and autoimmune diseases, you're right, they are, it's almost becoming an epidemic, and um, there's a lot of uh, research showing that potentially the gut itself, you know, um, which when I say gut, I mean the intestinal tract, the small intestines, um, there's, there's a lot of damage there, we call leaky gut or intestinal permeability that starts, uh, and that will, um, things get into the bloodstream that shouldn't normally get there, and it activates uh, your immune system to just start to go haywire. And ultimately, people have different healthy tissues uh, that gets attacked by their own immune system. That's why they call it autoimmune. So it's attacking itself. And um, what triggers this? Things like genetically modified foods, uh, sugar, uh, a lot of the, ar the artificial pr preservatives and things like that. It's just, it's just ultimately poor diet. Is, and that, is that just because your body doesn't know what to do with it? You have some something that the body is not right. used to eating, yes. you introduce some weird food, like uh, diet pop. Right. Uh, is diet pop a biological disaster waiting to happen? Well, or Well, a lot of those um, diet sodas and, and diet foods, which have artificial sweeteners, it's like you said, it's, it, the body doesn't know what to do with this stuff. It's, it's, it's a chemical, it's made in a lab, it's not real sugar. So your, it, your body's kind of confused, and so your physiology's like, oh, oh, sugar's on the way. So certain maybe hormones and things start to happen, and it's just, uh, that it just causes uh, different reactions in the body that are not ideal. So it triggers inflammation, uh, causes uh, formaldehyde development. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of artificial sweeteners are converted to formaldehyde in the body, okay. which... And formaldehyde's bad to have in your body before your uh, yeah, corpse, right? absolutely. Not okay, so while you're living, no formaldehyde? I, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, we'll get that uh, cleared up for our listeners. Um, we'll keep the formaldehyde out of our bodies. Can we talk a little bit about, uh, you know, animal f fat cooking with beef lard, uh, right. red meats, uh, all those things have gotten a really bad rap, and now people are starting to change their mind about that, too. Uh, I know a, kind of a group of guys that put out a newsletter. They're throwing butter in their coffee, right. and they're getting shredded from, right, right. from eating fat. Good, good. Um, you know, the, the term fat got a bad rap. And, you know, uh, the, the word fat from dietary fat is different from, you know, being fat, fat on our body. And I, that's why I call that, this is potential energy, right? It's okay. just a fat store. But, that's what I like to call it, right, potential there, there you energy. Go. But, but when you talk and about... I have a lot of energy. When you talk, there you go. When you, when you, when you talk about... Uh, Dietary fat, however, you, there there is bad. Uh, there are there are unhealthy dietary fats, and when it comes to red meat, you really want to choose red meat that's more from grass-fed uh, cattle okay. versus the conventional cows that are uh, in a date. They have antibiotics, they have the hormones, and but all. it's not so much the fat; it's that the that the. It's, the this, uh, the, right. the fat solubles have picked up uh, maybe medicine that you don't want right. in your body. Right, right. So it's, it, there, there, there are better qualities of fat. So when, when you mention butter, grass-fed butter, much better than, you know, just a regular conventional butter, grass-fed red meat, and you're in uh, fats like coconut oils, olive oils, uh, fats from avocados. Those, those, are, the, those are the healthy fats okay. that you want to stick to. Now, uh, why does fat... Uh, uh, why does fat send a signal to your brain to tell it that you're full? How come you can't eat a bunch of Twinkies and have that same thing happen? Right. So there are there's a, there's a hormone uh, in your body that is that is released that is it's it's basically triggered from any food, any calorie that you're fat, carbohydrates, protein, and uh, when 
when people eat poor diets and eat too often and, and, and aren't getting that signal, they tend to overeat. So it's not so much about the fat, it's more about the overconsumption of, of carbs and things like that it actually triggers more, more weight gain than anything. I see. Well, I know you're dying to talk about the thyroid some more. So well, there's, there's that, there's, because it's just a hormone. You know, thyroid just happens to be, you know, the hormone that, like I, like I mentioned, uh, impacts and affects every single cell in the body. So because of that, you can develop a lot of different different problems. Yeah, you said that was kind of the central right. central thing to to look at first, and then uh, then other di diseases would uh, kind of sprout off that, right, or, right. or uh, cause diabetes, or Correct. be more likely to get diabetes if your thyroid is not functioning properly. Yep. Correct. And when it comes to uh, hypothyroidism, you know these people, like I said, we talked about weight gain and how that's frustrating, but they also have things like they can't sleep, insomnia, they uh, maybe have cold intolerance, cold hands and feet, uh, low libido, uh, they, their hair's falling out. Um, it's just, it, it, it devastates, it literally devastates people's lives. And they're on medications, for example. They're taking a thyroid hormone and they feel no different. Their symptoms have not gone away. And on the, uh, at the end of the day, their labs are normal and they still don't have. Why are their labs normal? Well, think of it like this, uh, Clovis. If, if you have elevated TSH, which is a hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland, telling your thyroid, we need more th thyroid hormone. So it's elevated. Now, the reason it's elevated is because your body is not detecting enough T4 in your, in your system. So what is typically prescribed when a person has elevated TSH is artificial T4 in the form of Synthroid or levothyroxine, which are, which are it's just T4 hormone. So now you've artificially lowered the TSH. So now your lab tests are normal. However, it, it, like I mentioned, nine times out of 10, it's autoimmune. It's not addressing the underlying cause of why your thyroid is not functioning. So lab tests are normal. They're still not feeling so hot and uh, no one's addressed the autoimmune uh, component of it, which the, the, the word for, for uh, autoimmunity that affects the, the thyroid is actually called Hashimoto's. Okay, that sounds very Japanese. <laughs> very Japanese. It's actually a Japanese doctor physician that actually um, coined that and na named after him. So it's a, if they, they say statistically nine out of 10 women in the U.S. with hypothyroidism, that's what they, is going on is, is Hashimoto's. I see. Well, you're talking about uh, Synthroids, uh, which I take it are a synthetic drug. Right. Um, What's the difference between what you do? Uh, let's talk about what you do about it. We've talked, mm -hmm. kind of talked about the problem. What are some of the answers for this thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, I never, um, I never tell people to not take their medications. We don't really try to um, mess with medications at all. Um, we do, I do work with doctors, with their own doctor, uh, to, you know, some, sometimes their physiology improves so much that maybe the medication can be reduced to some degree. But what I do uh, typically do is we want to we want to focus on detoxifying the body, you know, removing toxins, you know, de de detoxifying the liver. The liver is our body's major detoxifier. That is where most of the T4, it, it is, is which is the inactive uh, thyroid hormone, is converted to T3 or the active hormone. So detoxifying the liver is, is a step. Another component would be healing the gut. Like I mentioned, leaky gut, intestinal permeability. We want to heal that and, and allow the body to have better digestion, uh, better movement of nutrients, and uh, you know not allow these uh, unknown, undigested particles and bacteria get into your bloodstream. So that's where we usually start with yeah, this. That doesn't sound good. No. Um, tell me, uh, tell me about the effect of uh, water on this. And I think there, well, there's a book out there about how uh, chronic lack or chronic dehydration causes right. a lot of problems and we're, we're uh, sodas and coffee and, right. uh, and uh, a lot of people don't drink nearly enough water. If you don't drink the water, is this going to contribute to things like uh, hormonal problems? And well, well, you know what, it's, it's, it's you know, back to the, it's the quality of water too. It's not so much, uh, a lot of people are dehydrated. You're right. A lot of their cells are dehydrated, just not getting enough, uh, you know, nourishment, and, and, and which affects the cell membrane. But um, ultimately, in, in a lot of water supplies, you have things like f uh, fluoride, 
chlorine, um, and these are things that you know do cause cell damage, and they do in, in, uh, for, fluoride, for example, actually you know affects the, the, the thyroid in a very negative way. Um, yeah, it doesn't uh, fluoride's really got a bad rap along right. with bread. Um, yep. So uh, we're getting rid of some of these bad it's in that, actors. It's in How that about bad the category? Yeah. And you met, you talk a little bit about the chlorine. Yeah, cl yes, chlorine. You know, it's it's uh, you know something that just it, it's a it's a molecule that the body recognizes as in some case iodine. So w w something interesting also about the thyroid I want to mention is if all the systems in our body and organs in our body, the thyroid gland has acts functions as a pump because it needs iodine. And so what it's doing is it's grabbing iodine, you know, as it's moving through the bloodstream. Most of other tissues uh, recognize our blood as more or less soup. It's like it's grabbing what it needs from the, okay. from the soup. But the thyroid has a pump. Now, when you have things in your body like chlorine, fluoride, it's, it's also grabbing that because it thinks it's, it's, it's iodine. So when a person starts to develop a thyroid disorder and hypothyroidism, it's more or less like a canary in the in the coal mine. You, okay. you know, we're down to about forty five seconds right okay. now, so we got to wow. start wrapping this up. Absolutely. Uh, tell us how to get a hold of you. So um, I do educational seminars about uh, hypothyroidism. You, I have a website you can look at. It's uh, www.omahathyroidsolutions.com, or you can call our office 402-281-0825. And Envision Wellness. Envision Wellness Center. Correct. Okay, well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, this show is brought to you by Nebraska Counseling and Hypnosis Center, and that's Nebraska Counseling and Hypnosis Center.com. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.